Good morning, Chairman Issa, Ranking Member Cummings, and members of the committee. I am Arthur Elkins, Inspector General for the Environmental Protection Agency and the Chemical Safety and Hazard Investigation Board. Thank you for inviting me to appear before you today. I would like to take this opportunity to publicly commend the Office of Inspector General staff across the Federal Government who work hard each day to carry out our important mission. As the committee is aware, for more than a year, this OIG was confronted with a denial of access by the CSB. The CSB's leadership asserted that the denial was based on attorney-client privilege. We countered that such denial violated Section 6A1 of the Inspector General Act. With that impairment of my office's ability to provide oversight of the CSB continued, we resorted to the rarely invoked seven-day letter. This committee held a hearing on the seven-day letter and related issues on June 19, at which you stated the CSB to turn over the documents to the OIG within a week. The CSB since has produced several sets of documents to the OIG. We have determined that the CSB has substantially, but not fully, complied with our document request. However, the evidence we have gathered demonstrates that there are additional documents within the scope of our request the CSB officials have not provided. In addition to the CSB matter, the EPA Office of Homeland Security continues to impede the investigations of this OIG. We provided testimony on that subject before this committee on May 7. While there are multiple facets to this problem, the crux is this. The EPA asserts a belief that there is a category of activity defined as quote, unquote, intelligence to which the OIG may have access only if the EPA determines the OIG access is permitted. This impairment by the EPA was ongoing when I arrived four years ago, and it is still not resolved. Now, I would like to discuss how well the IG Act is serving the taxpayers of this country in accomplishment goals that Congress set in passing it more than 35 years ago. On August 5th, I joined with 46 other IGs in sending a letter to this committee, as well as other congressional members, discussing the troubling pushback many of us have been experiencing from our respective agencies when we seek mandated access to employees and records. We ask Congress for a strong reaffirmation of the original and, we believe, still existing intent of the IG Act that OIGs have unfettered access to all agency information to assist us in obtaining prompt and complete agency cooperation. Mr. Chairman, questions about whether the IG Act is accomplishing Congress's goals and whether the Act needs strengthening or clarification are not hypothetical to me. They are questions with real-world impact on my ability to carry out my mandated functions. You might think, therefore, that I would say without reservation that the IG Act requires some enhancements on access and agency cooperation. However, I want all of us, IGs and Congress included, to be very careful about what I am saying and what I am not saying on this issue. The Act, as written, is quite strong and quite clear. It provides access to all agency information and all agency employees. There are no exceptions, not for material that an agency asserts cannot be further released outside of the OIG once the OIG does receive it, and not for some piece of agency activity that might happen to involve classified information. No courts, no congressional committees, and no opinions from the Department of Justice's Office of Legal Counsel have given any cause for concern that the requirement for access to all information means anything other than all. Any attempt to clarify or strengthen that authority could only suggest that it is not already strong and fully encompassing. The IG Act hinges on the cooperation of an agency with its IG. If there is not prompt and complete cooperation, the work of the OIG is stifled. In this regard, the IG Act can be compared to a house of cards. If you pull out the agency cooperation card, the entire act collapses. I therefore urge this committee to look at enforcement mechanisms for the access and cooperation already required. The IG Act is fine as written. The agency's ability to ignore the act without consequence is the problem. This OIG will be happy to work with your staff in concert with the Council of Inspector Generals on Integrity and Efficiency on solutions to address our access concerns. I believe that Congress can send a strong and needed message through legislative enhancements and other means that such impairment will not be tolerated. Mr. Chairman, this concludes my prepared statement, and I will be pleased to answer any questions you or the committee may have.